Welcome into another episode of Inside the Charge. Maddie Glab alongside Deion Dawkins and Spencer Brown. We're talking offensive line, we're talking fits, we're talking the snow vibes, so stick with it here. What's up, guys? Welcome into Inside the Charge. Dion Spencer, thanks for taking the time out of your busy, busy schedules to hang out. How you guys doing? What's up, Matt? Doing good. How you feeling? I'm doing good. It's it's the end of the season. The vibes are awesome. You guys are awesome. Is it done with Christmas, too? Is that a good thing? Yes. Yeah, we did yeah. get done with Christmas. You guys so got some presents over. in the locker room. We did get some you presents. You want to talk about that? <sighs> Who wants to break the show? Um, I, I saw on an Instagram story. The Shadur. The Shadur. The Shadur. It is a gift that is timeless mm -hmm. slash time piece, mm -hmm. and it will probably never leave my closet. Mm. Mm. I, I'm not. I'm just... Does it rhyme with Molex? Maybe if it pronounces like Rolex. Rolex. Wow. First Rolex. Nah, facts. Uh, Josh definitely gave us Rollies. Mm. Um, it, this was like a roly Christmas. This was a roly Christmas. A lot of guys got Rolexes. I don't know if I'll ever be able to say that in my life, but I'm glad I, I got to hear you guys say that. I wasn't to ever say that in my life as well. It was a Rolex <laughs> Christmas. Yeah, Josh gave us Rolies. It's amazing. How did he present them to you? He pulled us all in the O-line room, and he had like a giant bag. table. Yeah, table. But the table had gift wrap, like uh, almost like the present wrap over the table and behind the table everybody had to get up in order and look behind the counter and he had like different color faces different variations of rolexes that so we could pick so you were going on. to the rolex store no this was better than the rolex store because it was like up close and personal there was no glass amazing so we got to literally and it's free breathe on every <laughs> one of them <laughs> It was, not, it was free for us. It was free for you. Right. Wow. So, when are we going to rock them? As soon as, I, as soon as the links come in. Okay. So you got to wear those? As soon as the extra links, yeah. Yeah, I don't even know that. Right, I got yeah, you. you. I'm going to take have, care of you. You guys yeah. have bigger wrists, huh? Yeah. Yeah, those fat wrists. Mm -hmm. Gotta Got to order extra ones because you're old linemen. Facts. <laughs> so, it's all right. It's mm -hmm. all right. You guys gifted Josh something super cool as well. That almost was quite the show. Double gift for Josh. He almost killed us. Well, not us, but the yeah. quarterbacks. So, Josh almost killed. I think so he was intimidated the, by the, the horsepower. How did the idea come about to get him, what was it, a Polaris? Yeah. yeah he, had, uh, side by side, he, had, he had a side by side, and then he didn't have like just something to whip around on, so we're like, let's just get him up. <laughs> you got a side by side. You need a four there with a side by side. It goes hand in hand. All right. Of course. Yeah. He's got the backyard for it. And it's sick. It is it sick. Is, it looks very, very nice. Mm -hmm. Put my dad's to shame, that's for sure. What else did you get? You said you got him two gifts? I just got a bottle of wine. So, of wine. so I mean, I can't get you. I don't have Rolex money, but did you can get a, a Rolex for I him. I did soon. My, my brother soon. We'll see. Um, I got Josh a Rolex as well. Wow. I got a Rolex. You know, um, I kind of pressed him. I pressed him. I had to press him. You know, Josh. Josh is a great dude. He's a great dude. But you know, like we've had a great season for the O line. Josh has made lots of leaps, and I am one to just always bring light to the fact that offensive linemen do not get the shine they're supposed to. So if we can get a trophy from the trophy thrower, I want my trophy. What's your trophy? And that's a Rolex. That's a Rolex. So I then gave him a Rolex for all of the accomplishments that he's done in this year. Uh, after every game, it seems like he's breaking records and records and records and we're just playing ball. So I was like, well, he, he got us ro and Rollies, you know, I got him, him one and I had ordered his earlier. I waited till he gave us hours till I gave him his. I mean, you guys are a big part of some of his stats as well. He is the first player in NFL history to have at least 40 touchdowns See? in four straight nuts. seasons. See? Four straight seasons. Is that Rolly. crazy or what? One. Only one ever. <laughs> Only one ever. <laughs> Another one. <Yeah. laughs> I think uh, he does a really great job at kind of keeping that under wraps. Yeah. But I also feel like um, the NFL media and stuff like that like to really hate on Josh. I think he handles it extremely well. Um, but he's, it's day in, day out. Almost doesn't even feel like he did that or accomplished that because it's just, it's so normal to us and we're spoiled that way and, and happy to have him. And um, he has highlight reels on highlight reels. And yeah. sometimes that's because I get demolished and he rolls out of the pocket and makes something happen. <laughs> but I'm like, hey, it looks sick on YouTube. Let's go. You guys heard so he can ball out. Yeah. Timothy 17. Timothy. 
That's right. Uh, do you guys look forward to around Christmas time when everybody's tossing gifts around in the locker room? In the building Christmas, yes. In the building Christmas. Outside the building Christmas, no. You got the kiddos right Because we are yeah, the kids. big Santa Claus for our families and everybody that touches us. I don't have any little kids. We, are, we are Santa, so, you know, I always thought Santa would be fun, but, you know, Santa's boring. Wow. Santa's boring. That's a hot take right there. Dan that is Dawkins. kind of a hot take. Kind of yeah. sound like the Grinch a little bit. Yeah. You love Santa. I like the Grinch. Like it the definitely Grinch. is a different vibe, though. Locker room between and it's, outside. And, and I'm going to just, like, bring it, like, to the, because it's only because, like, I hate that, like, they make Santa and Christmas one day. Like, I'm Santa all year long, and I enjoy doing it, like, on a day that nobody expects it. And then it's just one day, and it's like, oh, I didn't get this. I'm like, damn. Like, all year. Like, you're good. I got you. You spoil the kids. You know, yeah, the mm -hmm. kids are spoiled all day, every day. But, you know, well, it's that's always, just me. It's always fun to see what you guys gift to each other and get from each other. I look forward to that because it's some cool gifts. Rolexes are amazing. <clears throat> They're going to look great on you guys. I already know it. Um, since we're talking about watches, let's talk a little bit about what you guys have been wearing to the game. So let's get into what we call Fit Check. <laughs> Good check. So, Tripped out. do we have any outfits that stand out in our minds from yeah. best ones you've worn this season? Dion, we'll start with you. Yeah. Whether it's a total outfit, whether it's shoes, are there is there anything that you've been super proud of? To be honest, what I've learned, sometimes for the bigger guys, the less clothes the better. Yeah, you shirtless. <laughs> I mean, the less clothes the better. You know, so <laughs> shirtless. Show up no pants. I mean, she, <laughs> You know, vice versa. Boxer you briefs, blue lemon, socks, Duluth, and shoes. I'm down. It's a win-win. But no shirts, tattoos, pants, shoes. It's a vibe. It is a vibe. You know, like if we was in Florida, you'd be in shorts with no shirt and shoes. Why not do it in Buffalo? How did you decide to do that? <laughs> Great question. Um, I kind of panicked before it's game time of what I'm wearing, so I did not have a shirt. Just so all, I said, all. I'm going with no shirt, and I just went with no shirt, and it was a, it was a, it was a great choice. That was a good choice. It was a great choice. <laughs> Were uh, you surprised by it, Spencer? I, mean, I was just on my phone in the locker. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like that's nuts. <laughs> I can pull that off. <laughs> yes, you could. No. Any no. offensive lineman could. I yeah. believe it. I hit some crunches for a walk in there. Yeah. Push-ups. <laughs> a couple of you're in the you're in the parking lot, just <laughs> getting repping them out. <laughs> Pick up the Raptors. Do the arms look good yet? <laughs> Uh, favorite pair of shoes you've worn this season, Dion? Mm, probably my Rick Owens. I enjoy my Rick Owens. You know, I, I have a lot of pairs of sneakers. Um, I like my Balenciaga tennis shoes as well. But uh, but the Rick Owens are, are probably cool because they're like a different vibe. Like they just bring the whole outfit to, together mm -hmm. in like a classier way. But I like my Rickies. Is there an accessory in jewelry or <laughs> bags that you yeah. have? brought to the table this year yeah. that you've had fun showing off? I have a silver Teffy, Telfar, silver that? Telfar bag. Um, it's a bag, I actually don't know who is the owner of it, if I'm correct. I think it's Beyonce's daughter, Good for her. isn't it Ivy? I'm pretty sure that it's like blue, if I'm correct. It's like blue Ivy Carter's brand and or she wore it or beyonce wore it first and then it blew up i guess and i was in where were we we were in chicago last year around christmas time if i'm correct right and i they had it in the store and i was like bet how do you find out about these things are you do you stay on social media and follow like fashion accounts to where you know Beyonce's daughter had this, or this is her brand, or so and so is doing a collab. I think this is cool. Let me buy it. Yeah. Where does the inspo come from? Well, I have a I have a shopper that helps me. Uh, Meech Meech uh, Meech kind of like keeps me up on the fashion that I could get into or that I don't. Um, like for instance, like Steph Steph is full blown. Steph Steph is full blown. Run like runway fashion. Paris, he's like all the way in. I'm more so like, like, uh, like I'm just toeing. I'm just half a foot in, where <laughs> I just pick and toe. choose what I can. Cause usually like the stuff isn't uh, accessible for the bigger guys. So 
I wear what fits, you know, like Balenciaga fits, so I wear Balenciaga. Like some of the other brands are kind of like real snug. I can get away like with a snug fit just for, you know, like a walk-in, but I wouldn't wear it to be comfortable in. I'll wear it just to be fly and then take it off. Right. But. Spencer, you got a shopper? Uh, no, I have, <laughs> I have uh, my agency just sends me some stuff here and there from yeah. the companies, but I just, I just keep it as simple as possible. I think the simple look is nice though. It looks clean. There's a few guys on the team that I would say have simple and clean looks. I would say you're one of them. Sam Martin has a very clean look. So does Sam Matt Martin Milano. Does so does Terrell Bernard. Yeah. I feel like you guys wear um, more of the whites, the grays, the tans, the blacks, the browns. Is that neutral? Is that what you call neutrals, it? yeah. Like I couldn't Lululemon. think the word off the top of my head, Lululemon but neutral pants. is the right Lululemon. word. like Lululemon. Lululemon They're vibe. like Lululemon. Well, I can't fit that. The only thing I wear Lululemon is pants, and those things are the best I've ever worn in my life. Lululemon colors. I mean, I think any colors could be Lululemon colors. But Lululemon like doesn't have colors like this in there. Well, it's not like tie-dye stuff. It's like solid colors. So you like so, you go solid on solid. It's right. New, so uh, Lululemon. Solid colors. Right. Neutral colors. I don't know. It's like California <laughs> vibes. It's like, Cali vibes. California it's like Spencer. Cali vibes. Uh, nah. Hoping not for long. Um, <laughs> what is what has been your favorite look so far this season for you? Um, my favorite look. I guess I had to go with my favorite hat that I wore, and that was the last home game for Dallas. It was like a green melon. Melon has good hats. Shout out melon. But they have like the flaps on the sides, which I found out is even better than a stocking hat. If you just pull your hood up and just have the flaps on your ears, it's a game changer. Nice and warm. But I just like that. And green's kind of growing on me, so I'd say that one for sure. But good counsel, Lululemon is pretty much all I wear. And a little Elwood. Elwood's like my sweatshirt. I like it. TB wears a little Elwood. So Sam Martin and actually Matt Milano. Wow. <laughs> You guys all fit together. That's right. I love it. Okay. Any cool shoes that you have loved wearing? I wouldn't say anything crazy. I just like Nike Dunks. Mm -hmm. I mean, any neutral colors of Dunks. Uh, I don't go too crazy with high tops or anything like that. Just simple is what I go for. Who else in the O-line room would you say dresses well? Hmm. You're asking Spence? Yeah, Spence um, and then you. I, I think Saibo is going to... I mean, he's he started here, and he's just every weekend he's got a little something else going on. I think he's Very true. he's grown into it. And I don't think anybody sees photos of Mitch Morris, but that guy dresses like a true classic dad, and that's awesome. <laughs> he just embodies all that. But he goes to the stadium like three hours early, so you don't even get a picture of him. That's dad. He's got to be that's there early. Got to make there. sure everything's all good to go. That's right. Mm -hmm. He actually, uh, you know, gets the stadium ready. I don't know if you guys knew that, but <laughs> he like mows the lawn and everything. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bates. Bates. Bates dresses good. Yeah. Very clean cut, you flannel baits. Cowboy boots. Yeah, you put a flannel on baits. Yeah. yeah. Look good, play good, yeah. feel, feel good. good. Feel good. It all play makes good. sense. Play good, play good. Yeah. All right, well, let's talk a little bit more about the season you guys have been having because it's been so fun to watch in a segment we like to call Talk About It. <laughs> All right, you guys have been getting after it this year, blocking the heck out of defensive linemen, allowing James Cook to run through for yards after yards after yards. Talk about it. Opening up holes for him, keeping the pocket clean for Josh Allen. Talk about so, it. So, Dion, what has been the difference this year with this group? Unity. Unity. We've. Uh... To keep it real, we've had a lot of shuffling throughout the course of our career here. Um, from, from being here for, for seven years, playing on this line, I have not, we have not really had consistent guards to stay every single year and be there for multiple years and year and year and year. Now it feels like our guards are staples like they're in the ground they're like they're grounded so I, like i would say having a consistency of five guys that are protecting josh and cook at a time is the difference maker from this year and the previous years because we play a position that everybody has to move the same way talk the same language kind of eat the same foods have the same vibes in ways and you know, it's a it's it's a good happy blend, and it's and it's been working. You know, Spencer, add on to that. I mean, you've been healthy this season as well, and I feel like your your level of play has risen too. Um, what have you 
thought about your play in addition to just having consistency on the offensive line, like Dion said? Yeah, I think just being healthy is, is a huge thing. Um, both both playing and and the mental game that you that you play with yourself, but uh, it's just, it was I had a good off season, and then rolling into camp, I finally got a full year with Cromer because I missed OTAs last year, so I just got thrown into it uh, during the season last year. But spending a whole year with Cromer, Cromer's the best line coach I've ever had. I think Dion would agree Hands with down. that. Cromer's Chrome insane. Dog. It's gonna be a sad day when he's not our line coach. I mean, it's just not realistic to say. Um, but for the O line, I think. Um, consistency equals cohesiveness in a way. Um, you know, we had Connor and Cybo come in uh, fall camp, so it's kind of like a new shuffling for us, and then it, it hasn't changed since then. And like Dion said, just having everybody on the same page, everybody moving the same way. I mean, you go from training camp, it was Cybo and I were having full conversations just to get the point across that we're going to this guy. And then now we go on to Sunday, and as soon as we hear the player break the huddle, hey, B58, and then we just know if it's going to be a thick one, if it's going to be a thin one, if we're going to like change the whole thing up, and it's more just we're all on the same page that I didn't say anything, and that just that's reps and that's compounding and compounding. And um, it's 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 been a blessing that I think we're one of three lines that have had the same starting five all year long. Jeez. And uh, I think it's just a testament to being durable, training room, taking care of your bodies. Everybody's being a pro. Everybody's on the same page and. Uh, different personalities, but once we get out there, we're just uh, one personality together. Well, you got a left tackle and a right tackle here. You guys are far apart <clears throat> in terms of lining up on the line of scrimmage, but you have to be able to communicate effectively, efficiently. Um, Spencer, I was talking to you last week, and you said, you know, Dion, Dion and I have gotten on the same page, and, and we've spent time together, uh, so that's helped us on the field. What have you guys done, whether it's off the field or in the meeting rooms, that you think has really taken your relationship to the next level? Dion, I'll start with you here. I would say more so just being honest with each other. And um, I'm gonna take it more for like the mental battle of it. Like, uh, be because like we're boys. So like that, that speaks for itself. Like as an O-line, like the guys are the, the guys. But like with the mental battle, like before every game, like, like I tell Spencer, he tells me like, bro, like we're the best duo in the NFL. Like, I'm the best left tackle, you're the best right tackle in the, the NFL, and together we're the best duo. And, you know, like, you speak things into existence, and and the more that you say it, the more you're going to believe it. So, you know, like, like we know how the, the, previ the previous years have been a little shaky, mm -hmm. and now it's, 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 it's solid. So it's more so speaking the truth mm -hmm. and then letting the truth react into the real world and we go out there and we play and he's killing dudes and i'm like bro you killed that guy <laughs> and he's like Dion, you killed that man <laughs> and, he, and then he says this like all day every day like we'll be in the middle of a of a meeting and he'll be like and i'm like my, my guy so it's a it's a it's the mental growth that has happened because the consistency of good play it just it has a different energy about you mm -hmm. so so it's been a good vibe. Spencer, how much does belief, having somebody believe in you and your ability help you once it get, comes time for the ball to be snapped and you to do your job? It's night and day difference from, like we said, the first two years of this year. Um, and just the repetition of saying it to each other over and over and over again, you start saying it enough, your brain and body starts to believe it, right? So um, that's kind of like the mental, the mental stuff I kind of talked about in, in the beginning of this. But uh, just from a standpoint of, Dion and I playing well together. I think it starts with at, out of practice and, and changing my game and taking stuff from Dion's game, which I was having a tough time vertical setting and I was watching Dion do it. So I was taking stuff from him. And then now we go to the games and rushes are flip flopping back and forth. And we can be in the middle of the huddle at a TV time. I was like, hey, what's 58 giving you? Right. And that's just talking back and forth and communicating, but also trusting each other. We're like, this is what we're seeing and this is what worked. I tried this, don't do that. And like, so, so it's just a good repertoire we have together, coming to the sideline, figuring it out. Um, it's just, it's just, a, it's a funny, fun time out there when you can have a guy that's similar to your play style that you can kind of do the same things, or I can't do some things like that. So it's back and forth, just uh, figuring it out together, and then the best, best play to attack it. Spencer, you look over at Dion. He's blocking somebody 20 yards down the field. Yeah. It's a pancake block. What's your first reaction when you look over and you're like, <laughs> "That's that snowplow." Yeah. The best of it. Yeah. Uh, but it's, I mean, that's the energy you need. I think uh, Dion's taking his game to another level. I think Mitch is. Um, doing the same, I think Cybo's coming along and Con I mean everybody's just doing 
their job to such a high level right now. It's it's fun to watch and it's fun to cheer each other on and uh, support each other. And um, I think like Dion said, like O line guys, kind of like we're shy away from the limelight a little bit. But when you have five guys in the room and even the guys that are in the room, like they're supporting each other, hyping each other up, like just getting the camaraderie and the morale going, and that just only snowballs into and uh, to a good product. I'm getting the vibes that you guys are also a tighter group, a tight-knit group this season. Where is the relationship between you guys? What do you guys do off the field? Not just you two, but like the group as a whole. Dion, where do you think that is at? Do you think you guys are, are tighter this year? Yeah. And, and what do you guys do when it comes we to eat, building man. those relationships? <laughs> we eat. <laughs> we eat. I'm going to tell you the truth. We eat. Um, it seems like we have like three functions a week. Where we eat together, <laughs> cause away games we eat together, home games like tonight we'll mm-hmm. eat out together as an O line, and then Connor. Connor has us all over on Fridays, cause Connor is a cook. He likes to make pizza and Connor's like like all type of stuff, like meatballs and stuff. So we're we're always together. We're mm. always t- together. So it's literally like every other day we're together, and I think that that's where it's coming from the most. Who eats the most out of the group? Side side oh, not even close. Oh my side gosh. I've never seen a guy house. So I saw him on the London trip. I've never seen a dude eat so much on the plane. I'm telling you, he eats so much. Dude's grounded. So much food. And I love him. I love him. Respectfully, as a big guy, like you're supposed to, but I have never seen a guy eat so much in my freaking life. And work hard. And he is. Yeah. And, and he still runs off. fast and works hard and it doesn't even like absorb. Like I'm telling you, the dude can eat. Like if we eat like right now and we leave, and somebody says something about food, he can eat again, as if he never ate. It's the words, like, He's oh, I'm hungry again. He's a machine. I'm telling you. He's a machine. He's straight diesel. I love straight it. Straight diesel. <laughs> All right, let's go around the offensive line room. Who's the biggest jokester on the team? Or in the, the offensive team? lineman room. Yeah. Oh, that's meant to answer that. I don't know if I can. Biggest jokester. Jokester? <laughs> I feel like we all, I mean, I don't know if it's even jokes, but I think like a good ribbing. Like it's not, I mean, some people might think it's mean, but to us it's just like communicating to each other. And I think it's kind of like we all just kind of pass the baton around. Yeah. Honestly, okay. Alec Anderson gives a good ribbing to <laughs> Bandy. Like, and they just have a good, I don't even know what you want to call that. Like bro ship. A bro ship, yeah. Bro ship. Yeah, they it's are. like they're almost like, damn, you guys are being mean to each other, but it's out of love. It's yeah. it's, it's insane. They, to watch. they came in together. I feel like they're attached <laughs> yeah, at the they hip. They are. The same always person. see them they together. Are. It's like talking to yourself. <laughs> they are literally the same person. Who's the most serious in the offensive line room? Mitch Morris. Dion. Mitch. Not even close. Mitch. Not, yeah. even, not even close. Hands down. But you need he, he, we need that in the room full of the personalities. You need a guy that's yeah. baseline all the time. And he likes to have a good time, but I mean, he also brings us back down. Like, okay, guys, let's focus up. I'm like, okay. Yep, I, I've talked to him dad before. Dad said, "Shut up." So let's just everybody shut up. <laughs> He's told me somebody has to be dad in the room, so right. I'm dad. That's right. He's he definitely dad. dad. And we love him. We love. Dad. I think that the best part about Mitch is when I kind of get him to laugh in it the walkers. True. It is funny. <laughs> like I'll start picking on him, and then he'll laugh, and that's probably like the best, you know, because like, but like you don't expect him to laugh. And then he just breaks out laughing. And you're like, I got him. You know, like like that is still normal. It's an accomplishment. It's an accomplishment. You get Mitch to laugh. Yeah. Right. Who is always in a good mood in the offensive line room? Mm. Uh, I would. My opinion is Connor. I feel like Connor is always. In a good I feel mood. like he's. Ne- I've never seen him in the dumps or like he shows that he's tired or. Yeah. I think he's. He's right there with Mitch of being at baseline majority of the time. Um, I'll I'll show you if I'm tired or not, if I'm pissed off. I'll, I'll say it, but so will I. I'm, I. My vote's Connor. For sure. So will I. Yeah, Connor for sure. I, I'll give it to Connor Wayne. Who's the best napper? Who can take a nap anywhere, anytime, any place? Just snooze. Probably me. Yeah, no. <laughs> no Probably me, man. I could definitely click a button and just be. Yeah, get it in when you can. Out. Yeah, respectfully. Yeah. Who's the most superstitious? I would sound superstitious. I don't think I don't know if it has so, a routine. Yeah. I would say if a person was gonna get out of whack a little bit because something wasn't right, I would. My vote is Bates. Oh yeah, that's my vote. Yeah. If something isn't right or if it isn't done his way, like he'll start getting a little anxious, <laughs> which that's fine. I mean, I get that way too, but. 
Have you ever seen like Venom, the movie Venom? Yeah. I don't think like so. Like Spider-Man Venom, and then like when Venom gets close to like that thing, and it's just like going. Blah, 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 blah. That's like Bates. The noise. But like the whole Venom itself, like it starts to like, yeah, like I know glitch out. I know what you're saying. That's Bates. Like the pipes. You're banging on the pipes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You need to see a movie. Okay. It's a great I movie. I need to see it. I need to see I'm it. I'm telling you, like that was a great an- analogy, but it just went. Oh, yeah. yeah, sorry guys. All yeah. right, before we wrap, you guys have been a part of some touchdown celebrations. Dion, you got to spike a ball. Crazy. Spencer, you were used as a horse, basically. Gabe <laughs> jumped on your back, and, and you guys <laughs> went across the the end zone. Yeah. When when you practice for that, I know the spike was probably, you know, the spur of the moment, happened, which yeah. Josh said, but I saw a picture from practice where you guys were getting ready to do that celebration. Yeah, that was, uh, I think it was Fast Friday or Thursday practice in the indoor, but Gabe just decided to do it. He said, let me jump on your back. So I was like, all right. And then we just did it, and then he's like, if I score, we're doing it. And I said, I'm down. And then I didn't expect Josh to throw a 60-yard bomb to him, and then I had to proceed to sprint down there. Smoke by the time I got there, and then we had to do that whole celebration, but it was a good, I mean, celebrations are, obviously they're fun, but they're almost needed in a way. Like, you gotta celebrate that, bring juice, defense season, now they're jacked up about it. So it's just a good, flow to the game that needs to be in there when something goes right you gotta celebrate i mean scoring touchdowns is hard so you gotta enjoy those you guys deserve to be a part of the celebrations too i know it's like get to the end zone as fast as we can but you deserve to have a role in it too be the main character sometimes you know it's like oh we scored i had to do field goal (laughs) right (laughs) right and rush back let's go 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 go. just think about that gatorade (laughs) and the bench and the bench and that ox Deion Spence, appreciate you guys. Thanks for for sitting down. Appreciate it. Talking about the year you guys have been having. It's so fun to watch you guys. It is so fun. Just playing ball, you know? Since I got here, there's been a lot of shuffling. Guys have been injured in and out of the lineup. For you guys to finally have a solid five that have been healthy all year, you guys deserve it so much. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Love you guys. Love you. Yes. All right. Peace out. Later. Stay tuned for another episode of Inside the Charge.